my beautiful people i hope you are doing great so in today's video we are going to be talking about some of my favorites of may and june the kind of i picked up along the way i tried i tested i loved and i want to share it with you guys so hopefully you enjoy and if you do please give it a like and subscribe because it really supports my channel so without further ado let's get into it so okay first of all i think a lot of the things in here have become my rituals whether they're morning rituals or evening rituals something to i think ground me or make me feel more relaxed may make me feel more centered and just a part of myself i don't know if you guys also are experiencing just this kind of like mission mash of emotions and crazy things going on i don't know if you're following astrology but we just went through mercury retrograde so that is very interesting something that i knew nothing about and actually just started listening to this amazing podcast so, well just kind of a few months now started listening to this amazing podcast called uh saturn returns with kagi i'm pretty sure i've mentioned that in my previous episode as well and i just love all these things that just kind of like try to point you to the right direction so the idea of saturn return is this time between around when you're 27 to 30 like your late 20s you're going through a transitional period and you're just navigating a lot of emotions a lot of shifts and a lot of changes are happening in your personal life your professional life and it's just really fascinating for me but that is saturn return this was a mercury retrograde which I'm not an astrologist or anything like that, but Kagi was talking about these kind of changes and shifts, this like massive energy that is like ready to be transformed into something else. And I don't know about you, this could also be just a placebo effect, but I definitely felt and am feeling now a bit lighter somehow. It could be also because it's my birthday month. But anyways, on another note, okay. Um, and it's really interesting because the last day of the Mercury retrograde, I'm using the quote called Mercury retrograde because, um, again, I'm not a professional and also I don't want to uh, misuse the term and just put everything, put everything that's been going on in my life because of that. But I also do believe in the power of I know how much power a moon has had has on the nature and on the world and definitely has power on us in some way as well. But anyways, I'm digressing. So the last day of Mercury retrograde, I went to a crystal shop and I don't own any crystals or anything like that. I would love to definitely explore that more. I only have a necklace with a uh, moonstone because that's one of the stone that is great for my star sign. But it was a really interesting experience because I went to this crystal shop and I was just looking around. And it's crazy because I am very sensitive to energy. And I, when I came in, I felt, I suppose, all of these crystals just rolling around and I could just feel, yeah, I could just feel a lot of things going on. And I was the only one in the shop. And I was just looking around for a while and then suddenly I just felt these intense, um, I suppose, connection with this one. And this one, it's a Jasper stone. You can see it's honestly so beautiful. Every single stone is a bit different. And I was talking to the lady in the shop for a while and she just said that that's the best thing to come somewhere especially to a crystal shop and just pick up what you feel resonating what you feel the resonance with the most at that particular moment and it's really funny because i i bought it straight away because i just i felt i suppose i needed it in some way and i looked it up the meaning of jasper stone and it's very much kind of what i needed at that particular day or that particular period in my life it was very much to do with healing and transformation and moving on and 
creating a new version of your life, creating a new version of yourself and just it's, it's a support and it's funny because a lot of people kind of believe in magical powers of crystals I don't know, okay? I don't know but I really like the idea of like putting an intention in something like this by intention I just mean that every time I look at it or every time I wear it I think of my intention, I think about what I want to achieve and that has been really beautiful to just wear it with me and just I suppose feeling supported or having it as a reminder to come back to my intention it's kind of the same like with meditation or yoga or any other spiritual practice that you have or if you have that something can be of a support to you not necessarily magically transform you uh, as a result of just having it some people believe that I don't know uh, you know you do your own research like create your own opinion based on what you find and what you experience in your life but I really love the idea of having an intention and just every time I come back to that it's the same like every time you come back to the breath you remind yourself of why you're here you remind yourself of what you want to achieve so I've been really loving my Jasper uh, crystal and I will definitely go back and start picking up some other things as well so that's my jasper crystal necklace you can get a necklace this is a bracelet but you don't even have to wear it sometimes i just have it in my pocket or in my bag just to have it close to me and next to me also if you are a crystal fan and if you have any experience with saturn returns or if you have any experience with any crystal healing please do share it with me. I, I find it really fascinating. I find it really interesting. So I would love to know what you think. So what else I have in here? I am pretty sure I mentioned you guys this. This is my holy grail of a shampoo, okay? A little bit of a TMI, but I run out of this. This is a Slovak brand called Ponyo and it's a tea tree and lemongrass, kind of a, a shampoo for dandruff or like very itchy scalp or if you're struggling with very dry hair and stuff like that it's also look at that beautiful it's the only solid shampoo that i trust and love so much and i had my parents actually send me to from slovakia obviously i'm the i'm in the uk but it's really interesting because i run out so i try to look for alternatives you know in here and I swear that I tried at least three shampoos that I kind of saw people were recommending and stuff. I tried the one from Body Shop. I tried some from TK Maxx and from Boots. And none of them were good. None of them were working. You know, if something says that it's for itchy scalp, that it should re relieve the, uh, the itchiness none of them work the same way like this one and i know some people can say oh you know you have to use it for a while to to see if it's working and stuff like that i had the reaction to them straight away and i don't know whether it was something in it but it just made me realize like oh my god this is crazy and quite amazing but then i had to wait for this shampoo to come um and i was just kind of looking into different ayurvedic recipes because i i love ayurveda i've been studying it and exploring even more in my own life, in my own experience. And I came across this really interesting hair mask or like hair tonic that some people do to relieve the itchiness of the scalp. And I came across this fenugreek mask. I don't know if you're familiar with fenugreek, but fenugreek is, so this is the seed of a fenugreek. I don't know if you see it. Very tiny. It's got really interesting kind of woody taste almost like a something that you would put in a perfume but um i'm pretty sure you can find it in some southeast asian stores or indian stores or you can always order it online so there was this amazing youtuber i definitely will link her down below she's also doing a lot of diy ayurvedic masks hair tonics shampoos i love watching her channel so much and she recommended kind of soaking i will definitely link her recipe down below i can't remember it 100 percent, but it was something like a quarter of a cup of fenugreek seed you soak all overnight in two cups of water filtered water and um 
it's really interesting to see it because it kind of absorbs water so it holds water something like a chia seed or um what's the other one there's this other one anyways i can't remember i'll remember hopefully uh, something like chia seed if you soak chia seed in the water they kind of just create this jelly consistency so i soaked it overnight and then you're supposed to blend it with the water that you soaked it in with some lemon juice or lime juice uh what else was in there soda soda bicarbona i think bicarbonate whatever you want to call it in english um and yeah i think that's it and you blend it in your high speed blender and it just creates this like jelly consistency she also put it on her face but i just kind of like massage it in my scalp um for an hour and then it's really difficult to rinse it off i'm not gonna lie but it really did relieve some of that itchiness that i've experienced and i was like da ayurveda thank you so much you're amazing um not completely i'm not gonna lie i think it's definitely a mask that i will be using again but because it's you know you can't really um it's not gonna create the same effect like when you wash your hair uh, when you massage your scalp with something like a shampoo it didn't have that consistency maybe i didn't blend it enough but it definitely still had the residue of the seeds um so it's a very great mask i definitely recommend and i will link her channel down below so what else i have in here speaking of ayurveda i just kind of stocked on the sesame oil because as a true vata i really am most of the time cold and now with the crazy weather changes in the uk and around the world um you can't trust the weather now it's like 16 15 degrees and it's raining last week it was sunny and like 25 so you know um and sesame oil is being seen as really great for vata dosha um i usually just i don't do this every day um as a part of the self massage called abhyanga so you're supposed to massage all your body if you don't have time sometimes i do only my feet or you can massage kind of behind your ears just really calm you down make you feel a bit warm and i've been really loving that as a part of my ritual as i've said i think a lot of these products have really helped me to create some kind of routine to create a ritual that i can kind of count on um and that's been really helpful to just have again like little reminders throughout the day to remind me that I can count on these little things to kind of again bring me back to myself okay you guys we gotta talk about these silk pillowcases maybe I'm late to the party maybe I am but I think every single person doesn't matter um, if you never had experience the comfort and the amazing feeling that these can have on your hair i think you should definitely purchase i have two silk pillowcases and they are so amazing for your hair they just yeah it just it just feels very soft and apparently it is very good for your hair so i gave it a try and i loved it we have quite hard water in here in bristol so um i still haven't purchased the filter on the water on the hard water and anything so i do need something to kind of soften my hair a little bit and i find with these when i sleep on it especially also on your face it's um because silk is antibacterial it doesn't break me out um i know a lot of people's experiences is kind of the same so i was very pleased with that okay now you know guys that i'm a tea drinker and i love tea okay i love experiencing with different flavors and just new recipes in general and stuff like that but i really have been loving just having loose tea i have so many just kind of herbs and i just craft and create a tea that i'm craving at that particular day um, I've been really loving these jasmine and green tea. Oh, it just smells amazing. 
Uh, I don't really drink coffee right now, so I think having something like green tea in the morning is so beautiful. Again, a part of a ritual that you can just come back to all the time. I actually picked up this. This is a huge... How much is this? How much? 160 grams. I picked this up in TK Maxx, but I really like jasmine tea with green tea. I think it's such a beautiful combination. So if you find something similar in your local area, give it a try. What else I have here? The other thing that I bought in actually a charity shop is this beautiful Zatar mix, okay? And you might ask, why did I buy stuff in charity shop? So in here in the UK, charity shops, for example, like Oxfam, will stock some of the products that are locally sourced and organic and in partnership with some of the social enterprises around the world. So this in particular is in partnership with the social enterprise called Zaiton. And this is a Palestinian brand, which I love because I do support um, and want to support Palestine, especially Palestinian entrepreneurs and crafters any way I can possibly. And the tar mix is a very traditional Middle Eastern um, mix that is used to make eat the flatbread or you put it and sprinkle it on the on the toast or on eggs or salad or something like that and it's so beautiful if you are in the UK area I definitely recommend you try these guys um, and it's mix of what's in here um, Majorana Syriaca I think it's a herb sumac sea salt olive oil and the tar and some sesame seeds it just smells beautiful you know like in the in the US everyone's obsessed with the seasoning called everything but a bagel from Trader Joe's try this you guys okay and I know everyone's really upset that the everything but a bagel seasoning is not available in the UK I think you can get it on on Amazon for something ridiculous like seven pounds but why would you if you can first of all you can make your own I looked into the everything but a bagel seasoning. There's literally poppy seeds, sea salt, sesame seeds, and some other herbs there as well. But this one is so beautiful. I 100% recommend you guys try this. It's great on if you want to make your own flatbread. It's great on to sprinkle on the eggs. It's also great uh, on the salads. I really use it for everything, like you would use any other seasoning. And yeah, I've been loving this one. What else do I have here? Okay, so Puka Herbs, which I love, most of the products I love, came up with these really interesting concoctions called Aqua Herbs, okay? And these Aqua Herbs are just, I have no idea what else I would call it, really like a concoction of herbs that you're supposed to mix with water that's kind of just calm you down it it is not just water mixed with herbs it's not like tea it definitely is stronger um, there are some flower tinctures which are not as strong as essential oils but you don't definitely don't need a lot to make a difference so I really love this one this is the first one I tried this one is called relax and this one has, I think, chamomile. What else it has in it? It has chamomile, lavender, and just kind of the herbs that are naturally very calming. And I like to drink this throughout the day, sometimes, also before I go to bed. You can also mix it with hot water and have it as a tea if you like. So as you can see, kind of, most of these things are, as I've said, to create a ritual for myself, to create a ritual and intention that I can always come back to. And I love that, you know, because this is hard time, you guys. I know that I'm very proud of myself, how I've been dealing with this, because it hasn't been easy. And I'm sure it has not also been easy for you guys. And I hope you're okay. And I hope you're doing well. And I'm sending you all the love that I can. But it's also important to sit with it and understand what are the emotions that these experiences bringing into me 
and i think at the beginning of the pandemic maybe i tried to like shut down all those all those emotions that i was experiencing but it's a completely natural it's a completely normal way of dealing with such a stressful situation like this one so i am proud of you i'm proud of myself be proud of yourself because you are amazing and we're gonna get through this together so again i might be late to the party but i finally tried this valida skin food light intensive instant moisturizing skincare for body and face i know a lot of people swear by this cream but i also always use the avino one um it works great on my face but i can tell you this one is amazing as well this one has i think calendula in it which is a really beautiful and really nourishing herb um, that a lot of people are using. I know a lot of people in Slovakia originally and traditionally used cal calendula, is that how you say it? Calendula for uh, calming properties. So if you haven't tried this one, definitely give it a try. I think it's definitely a staple. If you even, for example, burn your skin or it's a bit more irritated, aloe vera and this one, I know a lot of people swear by. Okay, you guys, so we're almost finished with the haul this one is a really interesting product i've seen the hype on the collagen powders okay i've seen how people are taking it and it's improving the quality of their skin and the texture of the skin then their nails and their hair so i was like okay let me give it a try amazon prime had a prime day so i was like okay so i finally picked up the dose and company um pure collagen peptides okay I, i'm very skeptical of things that are being kind of considered as the nutritional or health fats so i'm not claiming this is a holy grail or anything like that because i've only just started using it uh, i know that this is like a really good quality one which i wanted to purchase something like that um this one is also being sold in holland and barrett and it is the types 1 and 3 bovine collagen peptides, which I think is from fish and beef, I think. But I know that a lot of people really liked it and saw some positive results. So I will definitely report when I finish using it. But I really like that they are really trying to reduce the packaging as much as possible. They even said in here, here is the scoop with ditched ours. We're 100% plastic free and proud. So if you see that these little things, well, for me, it's not really little things because this is what the brand, this is how the brand is representing themselves, right? This is how they're telling their story. So if this is what's important for them, I'm happy, okay? Okay, we have two books in here that I would like to talk about. And I actually picked up in my local bookshop that is selling books for five pounds. Uh, I don't know what their business model is, but I'm here for it. Okay. And it really gives me the idea to explore authors that maybe might not be stocked in um, most of the bookshops. So I actually started reading poetry um, and started listening to... Rumi's English interpretation on the poetry and his poems. If you have never read or listened to Rumi's poetry, I highly recommend. It is like a meditation, honestly. You're listening to it and you just, you feel the power of the words. Uh, it's been translated from Persian, from Farsi. And I don't know if the English made a justice to the translation, but it still is such a beautiful wisdom that is coming through his poems. I can link some of the ones that I've been listening to down below. Sometimes I just listen to it when I go for a walk instead of podcast because it really kind of puts you in this beautiful mindset of just love and appreciation. Speaking of love, I picked up this beautiful um, collection of famous love poems and love letters. So here you have everything from Shakespeare to Bronte to Dickinson to Thomas Hardy. And I can tell you it's, it's so beautiful that across time and across space, 
kind of doesn't matter if it's writers or poets or just regular people or the way love is interpreted in media we still come back to the same feelings of infatuation or being in love and what does that represent and how that changes people so this one is just as i've said the one that i picked up i tried to find it online for you if you are interested in getting it but you can either also just find something like this online and i i love reading it it just takes you across time and space i suppose that's the idea of reading the classics right so i picked up this poetry book and also this amazing beautiful concoction of this it says beautifully written prose filled with heartbreaking details illuminates the journey of a generation so it's called in spite of ocean and it is kind of collection of stories of migrants and immigrants who migrated from different countries especially kind of countries that are troubled or uh, were under some kind of war conflict zone and um, and it just shows these beautiful kind of things that maybe we take for granted things day-to-day -day things that people have created for themselves and reinvented themselves so i love they are short stories and every single one is beautifully powerful and amazing and i just yeah i love reading it again expands my vision and perspective of what does it mean to be a human being and um it really makes me appreciate myself and where i come from and where i am right now even more because i know people who have done incredibly difficult journeys across oceans to come to country that's safe that can be supporting and encouraging of their of where they are in their life and they don't have to fear that they won't make it and it's just it's really important to understand that what is being played in media as politics and this discourse that we hear every single day most of it is played and biased and from perspective that is not the one that you should be hearing about is really the people on the ground i always say if you want to really learn about someone else's experience you just have to speak with them you can't read about their story from someone else's perspective that can be useful but things like this are important storytelling is really for me the exchange of ideas the exchange that happens between the person who's telling the story you know so i think stories like this autobiographies that's why i love the book educated from tara westover that i've mentioned in my last vlog because you can you can hear the thoughts you can you can feel the awakening you can feel the reckoning that she's going through so yeah if not this one pick some book that is from a perspective of a migrant especially migrant woman i think you really understand what does it mean to be a, a woman from a different culture coming to a different culture and what kind of shift that makes in you like an individual it's it's not an easy thing to do it's not an easy thing to go through so i'm getting passionate about this because i love talking about things like this and um i think this book is slowly but surely changing me for sure so uh, that is kind of the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've learned something. I hope I gave you a perspective that will be helpful in some way. And again, as I've said, if you do like this video, please give it a like and subscribe because it really does support my channel. So enjoy your day, enjoy your month, enjoy your week. Hopefully I will fire up with some other video very soon, but I really want to share things that are important and i think there's this oversharing of content going on on social media which is great but i personally think that for me i want to share things that come from a place of wanting to share them not having to do it so this is 
my gift from you from me to you enjoy it take it and uh, i'll see you soon love you bye